Hello everyone, this is a no damage playthrough of Resident Evil 5's Lost in Nightmares DLC on the PC. We will be playing the game on Professional, and I am joined today by my co-op partner and close friend, Kamina, aka Drew. What's going on, Drew? Uh, everything is good. I'm very happy we got this done. Yeah. And it was, it was painful at times, but it was very, very fun. Nah, he's completely right. This is a very, very... It's not a very hard DLC, but we'll get into the specifics as to why it was very hard. Uh, and without further ado, please enjoy. ago, the BSAA received intel as to the whereabouts of Umbrella's founder, Oswell E. Spencer. Jill and I were ordered by the BSAA's European headquarters to apprehend him. We accepted that mission in the hopes of uncovering some info that would lead us to Wesker. Chris to HQ, come in. We're at the target's location. Copy that, Chris. Move in and procure the target. Roger that. What can you tell us about the area? The satellite scan isn't showing anything out of the ordinary, but regardless, you should expect the unexpected. Understood. We're in. Let's move. Okay, so first thing we're going to have to discuss is the PC version um, is riddled with bugs. There's a lot of desync and a lot of major issues. Enemies keep getting clipped around walls, the Guardians especially. Uh, me and Drew had a hard time playing this. It actually took a lot more tries than we wanted to. Uh, we downloaded something called the RE Fix, which was supposed to stabilize this portion of the game. Uh, because the base version, the Windows uh, Windows Live version, is like just completely a shitstorm. Uh, it still has its major flaws. We were able to muscle through and get this final. Yeah, I like. Uh, I so on my PC, it on my playthrough, you'll see a lot of the the desyncing issues, and we'll probably talk about it as we go through. I'll explain like why things are taking a little bit longer um, as it's happening. But uh, just, I had a lot of problems with this, especially having an ultra-wide monitor. Um, RE Fix was essential without it crashing nonstop. Uh, just trying to get through the base game to even get this unlocked. Right. We, we, we had problems galore. Um, so if you notice, the first thing that we did was I went ahead and took out all of the score stars. There are a total of 18 score stars that me and Drew will be collecting during this game went ahead, he went into the Spencer guest room, he grabbed the first password, which was password 3, and he also grabbed, I believe it was Magnum, Magnum. In, yeah. which, in which you gave to me, and I'm going ahead, Come on. and I'm going to get rid of my first aid spray, just so that we don't, you know, accidentally use it. Sometimes when you're running around on this map, it's very easy to use health. Raccoon City? Yeah, I pick up, I believe it's the... I don't know if it's remember if it's the machine gun or the sniper on this run. I believe um, it's the sniper. Yeah. Yeah, the sniper. Okay. Yeah, and I got the two stars at the top. One at the very, very top, and one in the clock. Perfect. So, um. So one and thing. And then I basically just break down this door for the inevitable guy that's going to come through here playing on professional. Exactly. So just as Drew said, there are guardians. There are these gigantic creatures with these huge ass like metal axes that um, we need to get away from. And the best thing to do is break down these doors so that we could escape because the animation of opening the door is kind of almost like the older Resident Evils where it was like traveling through the door slowly and that could lead to getting crushed. I remember the last time I played this. Yeah. And it's also we want him to come in here so we can, you know, basically go around him, making it easier. 
Absolutely. Uh, I consistently messed up on this in testing um, because I'm using a PlayStation 5 controller. And yeah. so the buttons show up as Xbox buttons, and my brain just. It is, it is tricky. Not... It is tricky. One thing I will say is I'm using the mouse and keyboard, and I, I can't recommend that because it was very difficult. So, one thing if you guys notice, Drew ran out to the outside of that door purposely because the spawn points for enemies in this game on the PC are terrible. So he stood over there to make sure that the Guardian didn't sneak up right on us. Yeah, because sometimes when we were testing, I, I, again, I just, it could be desync, it could be the port, I don't know exactly what it is, but he would spawn literally in the almost in the room, like I, right outside the door, because we broke down the door so we can do that. Yeah. Uh, and that caused a lot of untimely deaths that we didn't expect so the best way to deal with that is to basically run in before the other person grabs the the emblem mm -hmm. and then you can like walk outside and then he'll spawn in the downstairs area and then go up i'm right now grabbing him and making sure that like he comes i believe i hit him in the eye once i don't remember if it was this run exactly uh but i think on my i think you did room. yeah so if you guys notice, uh, so like yeah, so yeah. you can see right there is is the problem. Yeah, where we're getting we're just getting caught on walls. So um, yes, one thing it's like there's invisible walls in this version. So you have either have to align yourself perfectly with the guardian to make him follow you in a straight path, or he's going to get stuck on a lot of invisible walls. His weak point is the eye in his back. Notice that me and Drew spread out. I am the one that's hitting him in the back, and then when he goes down, Drew is the one that's doing a lot of the melee assault. There can be times the Guardian will run towards you, regardless of the character. Just make sure you keep your space, because he has an absolutely deadly swing. Which will either put you on the floor, or basically your friend will have to resuscitate. Yeah, you don't want to double hit him, because then he just does this rage attack where it is ridiculously hot large area. 100%, um, he's right. This is where you see uh, me uh, being bad at aiming, uh, trying to... But we got didn't it. expect him to, to get to get to get aggro, but he didn't. Yeah, he did get it. It was fine, but so every guardian I'm... that you kill, every guardian that you kill has a score star. Score stars are important in order to get an S rank. They're under the S rank prerequ prerequisite in this uh, this DLC. So there's a total of 18, and then there's mini ones. You see me right now from this perspective, just kind of waiting for Drew to go ahead. He is on the opposite side of the mansion right now. He is picking up any weapons or ammo that we could need. He's also grabbing some of the score stars that are in the area, and he has to find the heat-sensitive paper. Now I'm able to go ahead and burn this paper and head over to him. Also, guys, if you do want to see Kamina's perspective, as in him playing as Jill, you could find it in the pinned comment section as well as my bio. Uh, I will have the link to his channel, and he will have it vice versa for me. Yeah, so right now I, I grabbed the two score stars on the top of the ceiling behind the bars and in the room in the, uh, like in a cage. Um, I don't uh, I, normally, so like proximity mines can spawn here. Um, you can get the sniper, the magnum, potentially, they're all different runs, and the more you run it, you start to realize, like, okay, you, there's different, like, outcomes, uh, and there's different, like, set RNGs, it seemed like. For the weapons, right? The weapon sets? Yeah. yeah. The weapons, the what spawns in this room, specifically, um, or the ammo, because we've had magnum ammo drop, and we didn't ever get the magnum. Yeah. That was, that was very weird, and like, oh, okay. Very sure. strange. <laughs> So before Drew went inside of that room with spikes, he shot a score star that he noticed was on the top of the room. What he did was he shot the lock for me so that I could pull the lever and save him. There was a crank inside of the safe. We also have another guardian roaming these halls. He realistically should be chasing me in here, but because this version is very buggy, uh, he seems to just kind of migrate into the main hall over here. So one thing you have to do in this version is pull a lot of these creatures. I shot at him twice. He he doesn't want to be in this room because I don't think this is a room that he realistically frequents, right, Drew? That's why he keeps turning around in yeah, it. Yeah, he, he's not supposed to be in this room, and we we force him into this room by standing on the thing. That's why you see, because he went, he went to the left. 
And when I stand on that wall, he decided to come in. But as you can see, he doesn't like the room. So he just immediately just wants to turn out and leave. Uh, and we just use this to our advantage. So this uh, was... By... This... This was a dangerous move on my part because he was right in front of me and I was afraid he was going to grab me. I went ahead and did a double punch. That could lead to the move that Drew said that could be very dangerous. Sometimes you have to use it. You know, and all I'm doing yeah, is... Yeah, just, it's just that you want to minimize... When you're trying to do no damage, you, your goal is to just minimize risky plays. Absolutely. Um, and in this case, it was fine. We prepared for it, but it was just a... You know... Just a warning as to make sure that you are far enough away. Yeah, it was a precursor. Like, uh, we, to... We've had that problem where we didn't respect it and got hit for it. Yeah. One thing we will touch on in this run is, of course, all the score star locations. Accuracy, hit accuracy, plays into a major account of this. Um, time is also a factor, but I will be honest with you guys, if you play through this DLC enough, you pretty much know where to go. It's not very long. But Time is very forgiving. E even accuracy, as long as you're hitting these guys in the flesh sack, you're 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 fine. And you're not just randomly missing tons and tons of shots shooting these the stars, the score stars. You're fine. You're totally. Those are the easiest things. Um, I mean, overall, this DLC is. It, it was fun. It was. It's very, like I guess, easy. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's just. It can be frustrating. Uh, some stuff we had to deal with. It, it took a longer than we expected. And that, uh, and that's the problem. It was more so like it wasn't the gameplay. Like in the regards of the game itself, it was the port and just the the poor like desync, the the glitches that that bothered us the most. It wasn't the actual game itself. The game itself, it was a lot of fun. We just had a lot of problems with this port that almost ruined our experience entirely. But a recommendation, and I think Drew will attest to this, and he is a big PC guy. Please play this game on the uh, console. I hope we don't run into whatever it's a much better experience. Uh, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that's just like, I mean, the fact that I had to download a fix to make, to fix widescreen to even not make it crash on me every 10 seconds was, it's just, yeah, it's just. 100%. If you have it, you have it for the uh, console, I'd get it for the console. It makes your life. So, so much easier. So two more score stars, as you noticed. One was on the hand of that dead cellmate. I went ahead and shot him, and then there was one right above where I'm standing with Chris. One thing you're going to notice that Drew is doing is he is baiting the Guardian to come downstairs. This is a cool bait trick because now Drew is basically going to be the bait. While I head upstairs, and I'm going to use the sniper rifle to hit the Guardian from behind. Yeah, this is why I gave him the Magnum and or the Sniper or, or these weapons so that it makes this this section much easier. So I'm just, I don't need anything because I'm just the bait and it makes it easier because he can guarantee get the shot on the eyes. Yes. So we can just keep doing this over and over again until we kill him. And it, it just makes it so much easier and safer. You don't have to worry about, you know, oh, okay, close corridors and having problems. Uh, exactly. Although we do have some strategies for if you get stuck upstairs that we had to deal with. Yeah, um, that happens quite a lot. There are times where he is upstairs, and if you're too close to where he is, he actually despawns from that area and is downstairs. So as you saw, I put in two sniper shots each time that Drew, before Drew took the shots. Uh, you saw there was a score star in that upstairs location of where we were. The zombies on the floor inflict no damage, but they are just annoying because they grab you. So I like to just... Just put one bullet into them. If I used to dabble with using the knife on them, but if you get too close, they just all of a sudden zoom up and grab you. So Drew went ahead and hit the other score star that was underneath the butcher table. And what he's doing right now is realizing what Drew that the the uh, guardian yeah, is so close here. Yeah, so the guardian is stuck. You can on my end, you'll see him the, the weapon getting stuck out, but he's just not actively breaking the wall like he should. This is the myriad of technical problems that we were dealing with. Yeah. So we're sitting here like, all right, how do we get it? How do we get him to break through? So uh, what I did was I ran back a little bit because I wanted to see if by trying to pull his his character to follow me, almost like a Mr. X in Resident Evil 2 type of thing, it would work, and it seemed to work. So I unload a plethora of Magnum shots while he's up with the handgun. 
if, if you get the uh, proximity mines here, it's also really easy. Simple. Because you can just Very put proximity simple. mines right in the front and just let it just go. So depending on the RNG you get, machine gun also works. Um, if you need to back up in that spot, back up. So you're safe, but yeah, it's relatively easy. This We have to watch out for the guy up top, because if he spawns up top like he should, then we have to worry about that because he'll drop down for us. He did not. He is in the... Oh, he's all the way over there, and I think he's stuck. He is stuck, which he actually, is stuck, yes. which actually played to a good benefit. Not that me and Drew could not defeat him if he was running around. We've done it multiple times. Now, this is also something that we should discuss, Drew, is that this is it's optional to kill certain guardians. You don't have to feel like you need to kill every guardian to get the score star. You need oh, yeah, no, you don't. You, you don't have to kill this one or the next one. Um, the next two, right? At, yeah. Oh, no, the next two, yeah. Because, yeah. You, you, you don't have to basically yeah. kill the, the, these next two ones at all if you don't want to. I believe an um, S rank is, I believe an S rank or, is four or more guardians killed in which you can pick yeah. up their score stars. I mean, if you want it, if you want to do it because you want to go for the kill all run, I mean, it's perfectly fine. Absolutely. And, you know, it, you just need to worry about ammo more, but. Yeah. If, most likely in this case, if he didn't get stuck, we wouldn't have even have killed him. We yeah, just we would literally just run out. around him. We just run around him and not care. But we did it because we just, in this case, we were just, like, right. it was just safer. Because if we aggro him and he turns around and hits us, mm -hmm. well, then it runs over. 100%. So we're just, we're just SLL at that point. So you saw I, I threw Drew up there, and uh, I went and grabbed the Silver Crest, Drew grabbed the Gold Crest, and I'm going to go ahead right here and grab the Score Star. And then I just jump over, put him in really quickly. I, I give it a second a bit because I don't want the guys to basically jump up and hit us. That has happened before, taking our time. Uh, so I just wait till he grabs it, grab it, and then jump. And he also knows, remember, he knows exactly where I am at that moment. Are you okay? Because there is a tracking where you press a certain button and you could tell where your partner is. So we use that to our advantage quite a bit. Um, Try to find a way out. I believe that's R1 on the PlayStation 5 controller. Yeah. I don't know what it is on PC. It's Q on the PC. On the mouse keyboard, yeah, I got it. Yeah, so now this is the Terror Maze of Doom. Um, yeah. This, uh, this part could go one of two ways, bad or very bad. Yeah, this is one of those, like, it's... Our issues make this so much harder than it needs to be. Yeah, overall, it's very it's very simple in terms of you just gotta lure the, the guys, like we were doing before, to... Yeah. Uh, to, to, the, to the area, whatever color that you see it, uh, whatever crank that you get, and then you crank it, and then you drop it on them, and they die um you can have t there's times where we had it so we're all three spawn at once after we do the first crank um a uh, fun fact also that blue is normally red yeah uh, so they so randomized most rng times it's it's red we got blue which then caused us to have to we had a whole setup where we do the first one red and the next one we normally purple then yeah. it would be blue, then green. Yes. And we had this whole setup, and when well, when you're doing this live, essentially, um, when things happen like that, you have to completely change. So we yeah. are now trying to so grab this was... him. And this is my mistake, because I went, oh shit, and I thought that he saw where I was going. Because you could see that my, my mark, but... See, the thing is, is that unprofessional difficulty, what Drew is explaining 100% correctly, is that I can see him on the map. On professional, they take away being able to see the Guardians, which is a neat trick, but also very effective in taking and in, in stopping a run and also, like, difficulty a level. So what Drew has to do now is, since I didn't see the guy, I was able to escape just in time. In the maze, the only way to kill them, since we don't have any weapons, is we have to crush them. So I'm pulling up the crank right now, in order for Drew to basically bait the monsters around the different map points, and then bring them back through this path, and then I'm going to drop this spiked, gigantic metal roof, not metal, stone roof, right on top of them. Yeah, so for this one here, I am just going to purple, and I'm doing the trick of just jumping up and down. Because as you saw what he just did to live and not get hit, if you jump down, 
and he jumps down or he jumps up, you, you don't have a chance to get hit. Um, and so I did that to move him so that he has enough time to do it. Now, uh, right now, he is stuck on the wall. And I am, like, scared shitless to... Yeah, because he doesn't want uh, to... I don't want to get hit. One thing... So right now I'm running around trying to find a flash grenade so I can unstuck him. You can see it on my play, my point of view on on my on my video. Yeah. Um, I just I just grab a flash grenade from one of the box, boxes and then I just unstuck him, thankfully. And that's the, that's the downside that we were talking about glitching. So you'll see right here... Gives me the okay. I'm going to drop it on top of his head. Four fragments that we need in order to progress to the fight, which is Wesker. Um, what Drew mentioned about them getting stuck around corners and him being nervous to kind of bait them is sometimes when they finally get unattached to the invisible wall, they rubber band right in front of you and will grab you. So again, it's all a reflection of the PC port, which is... For all intents and purposes, and with respect, a shitty port. Please just, you know, play the play the console. Yeah, so, um, basically, at this point, uh, our goal is to just get this done as fast as possible. So we're gonna stick together to basically grab. This is the red. Now that does normally what we wanted to start with. So we're just gonna try to. It's right here, so we're just going to try to grab the next person as fast as we can to, to do it. You don't need to do it as fast as possible. Please take your time. You're not yeah, in any you're not rush pressed to get for the time. Ass. We just yeah. personally have done this probably 17 bajillion times, and we just wanted to get it done as fast as possible. So he is right. So there are two guardians that now spawn, and Drew has to deliberate on where these guys are, He's going to pull into red, and if he could pull two in, because yes, you could kill two up to three of them in one, in one crushing of the of the stone ceiling just, that we could drop. Just know that if you do do more, you have a higher chance of him blocking it, which then you either need to either punch him or you need to throw a flash. If it's only one and he blocks it, just punch him or kick him as you jail. You're it's safe. Don't worry about it. It seems risky. It's not. You got plenty of time. Um, but if there's multiple, you need to throw a flash grenade, or you're uh, you're just gonna die because you're gonna get grabbed and then that's it. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. So now we got the serpent tail shard. Now we're kind of keeping an eye on where the. Guardian is in retrospect to us. We're going to now go to the right side, and we're going to go ahead and grab the next crank. This wall is not broken down, so we're going to take a step back. And when we hear that music, that is an indicator he's right here. He's tracking us. And we're going to do this little trick that I like to do. The Guardian jumps up, and I jump down. See you later. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. It's very easy to do, and... It, it, it makes you much less risky. Absolutely. Um, but it's so funny because normally we don't ever get this RNG set where it's this is green and the other one is purple. So I yeah. think I go in. This was a very Am I going to green path. right now? I think I'm going to green. I think you're trying that to. I'm going to purple. We have green right now at the moment, so I'm not sure if you were looking for the purple crank at the moment. I think you're trying to bait the Guardian so that I could get over to the crank. Yes, yeah. That's exactly what, because that's where I went to uh, I went to red. Completely dodged then, that zombie right there. That was absolutely I hate that crazy. zombie. God help me. So you guys will notice the, the final Guardian is actually glitched right over here on this wall. Um... Which I noticed happens quite a bit in the playthroughs, because whenever I go to do the crank in this area, Guardians sometimes, as they're trying to track you, they track on a very linear path, like right in front type of path. So any exterior or like right to left, you know, peripheral, they're going to somehow get stuck on these invisible walls this game has. I went ahead and I gave... Again, the zombies cause no damage at all. They're just annoying. 
Um, I went ahead. Yeah, and... Wait, this has been Resident Evil Four. <laughs> yeah, that would have been terrible. <laughs> RE4 remake. They for the next ones, they need to fix that shit where you get. So, basically, the Guardian unstuck himself, as you saw. He went through all that trouble of switching grenades just for him to unstick. Drew is now leading this one into the green area, and I'm going to drop it on his head. Yeah, because our big issue was, you'll see it on my my point of view if you watch, um, that wall wasn't broken because he, he got stuck. Yeah. So... So Drew uh, like I said, progress. there's times when you have all three that spawn, and then you have to do a different, a different, you know, strategy depending on like how many spawn, how many get either stuck or like what happens. Um, so you have to like, if you're going for this S, you have to mentally prepare yourself. You do. Um, for that, because if you if you run into that issue where like you were expecting one thing and something else happens, you're just gonna get burned like we did, and it's just it, it's just a learning experience. Um, hopefully, you don't run into as many problems as we did. Uh, one, one thing we failed to mention earlier on, I wanted to mention. It's a little late for it now, but when you're shooting the guardian with the gun, if you're not hitting the eye and you miss, there is a chance that he will. Acid before out of him, and that could lead to your partner that runs up and does the melee attack actually taking damage from the acid. So when, oh, you, when yeah. you are at that part, yeah, when you are at that part, make sure you're hitting the eye or your your teammate is a little bit distant so they don't actually take any hits. Yeah, that's why you saw us like we would space alternate. out. Like you wouldn't, f I he wouldn't fire when I would go run him to go get close because you don't want to shoot cause acid and then hurt your party members. It's a hundred percent. Yeah. We made that mistake a couple of times. A couple of times. So now I am going to bait this. Um, lovely yeah, purple gentleman. is our last one here because we. This is all out of whack. It's really funny how the intent we get. It's. It's funny. I, I think different than normal one. I think uh, Drew, you would agree. We did not expect to do it on this one out of any. This was a uh, very no, interesting we, one. We got to the point where we were going to go and do it on the PlayStation Five or yeah. PlayStation Four version. I have it on PlayStation Five. Um, yeah. Yeah, and just to get it done. Just just to get it done because we were just we were struggling so much, but we got lucky and so and f funny things enough. Things in our favor. Funny enough, Wesker. So now we're going to fight the final boss, which is Wesker. Wesker was the hardest portion of this game for us due to the lagged responses to the seek uh, the QTE, which is quick time events, which you guys all know was a big thing back in the late two thousands. And yeah. funny enough, we ended up actually, you guys will see, finding a method to actually ruin him without even really causing any sort of problem. Yeah, it's even worse for the person, because uh, if you're not the host, you have to be the one to, the host has to shoot him because you won't get that the, the delay. Yeah. Is, is the pain as the person who is not being posted. So I had to rely on Rob here to do it uh, for me. You have to have a lot Maybe of trust in your good. partner for this. For these DLCs, especially this one, you have to have a lot of trust in your partner. Also, guys, by the way, that was the final score star in the hallway behind us. Now you have all 18, so congratulations on the trophy. All right, well, yeah, we're mentally preparing ourselves, and we're getting ready for the cutscene to get Wesker. We're going over strategy. Yeah, we were deliberating here on exactly what we want to do, which I recommend you do as well. Okay, so the first thing you want to do by Wesker is you want the host, as Drew said, to be the one to get baited out, and basically, I'm going to stand behind Wesker. Now, Drew is going to do the same thing. We want yeah, Wesker... You, yeah, you always... When he does the kick, you want him... Somebody needs to be behind him. Yes. Because then he does the kick, and you just need to just basically space each other. And then this is all you have to do. And Literally, that's it. Once he does it, the host, which is me, will keep punching him. And now we did extra damage to Wesker, so you also got that trophy, and we got 66,000 6, extra score stars. And that is no save, no retries, no damage, all stars, S rank, 
Lost in Nightmares. Okay, so that was Lost in Nightmares. No retries, no damage, all S-Ranks. As you can see, there's a damage calculator right over here with total zeros. Uh, we are working on the Resident Evil 5 main game, no damage as well, followed by Desperate Escape. We are also working on another Resident Evil project we will not say. Thank you, Drew, for being here. This is the Notorious Base, signing out. We'll see you on the next one.